What's up everybody, Jeremy Weiss here with Weiss Tech Hockey and welcome out to our International Coaching Symposium Workshop. I'm really excited about this. We've got some cool material coming down the pike um, over the next few days. So specifically, we're gonna be hitting three different videos, three different topics. Um, the first one, the one you're gonna be seeing today is uh, we're gonna be talking a lot about systems and how to use systems to help you organize your individual and team skill development. Um, the next video, we'll talk about three simple questions that you can use to teach, read, and react to your players. We've had a lot of really good success with the coaches who have used these three simple questions. The third video that we'll get to in a couple days is um, we're gonna be talking about understanding and developing cohesive systems. Now that may sound like a mouthful, it'll all make sense as we get there, but it's gonna be you know a lot of content, a lot of really useful material, actionable stuff that you can take and put into work with your team, and uh, I'm really excited about it. So specifically in this next video, the, the, over the next few minutes, um, we're gonna be talking about the development period, the development pyramid, and why we need to invert it when we're planning and strategizing as coaches. Um, we'll also be hitting on how to decide what to focus on. This is one of the biggest questions that comes in is, how do I figure out what to do next? It's a big question on the minds of a lot of coaches. Um, then we're also gonna talk about how to use your systems objectives to formulate your skills curriculum for your season, for your players. So that's probably enough intro. Let's go ahead and jump straight into the presentation. And again, we're gonna be talking about how systems will help you organize and, and manage your individual and team skills development. I'm sure you've seen this or some version of this in the past where you've got your skills at the bottom, you know, everything revolves around skills. If you can't skate, you can't shoot, you can't pass, you can't be in the right position for a system, um, you can't break out. Uh, and then, you know, so obviously we need to start with skills first. So this is from the developmental perspective. Next is tactics, right? So if you can't skate, um, you know, if you can't pivot, you're never gonna be able to execute tactical things like gap control or, um, you know, read and react timing, those kinds of things. So obviously, you know, and this is, this is kind of, um, I would say it's, it's pretty common sense, but it's good to, you know, be able to put it into words and kind of have a diagram. So skills development first, then tactics, you can build tactics on top of skills, and then systems and then strategies, right? So systems is, uh, you know, what style of forecheck are we gonna use? Um, what type of D zone coverage are we gonna use, right? Strategy kind of goes with, you know, what type of forecheck are we gonna use against which team? So, you know, if we've got a team that's, uh, you know, well skating, good puck handling defenseman, does that play into what type of forecheck will be most effective against that team? Or if we're playing against a team that, you know, their defensemen don't skate that well and they cough up the puck, there's pressure. Well, we might want to adjust our forecheck based on, you know, what, what the other team's strengths and weaknesses are. So that's our, our, our development pyramid. Now, when we're looking at that, that makes sense. That makes sense from a developmental perspective. But where we get confused is, you know, how do we actually think through that as a coach? As a coach, we actually almost, we, we invert the pyramid. So we actually take everything that was on the top and put it on the bottom. It's not a complete inversion, but it's very close. So um, for example, the first thing that we do while we're planning a season or while we're planning a practice is we take a look and we say, what type of team are we? What are our, what's our team's strengths and what's our team's weaknesses? And what type of systems are gonna suit our team's strengths and weaknesses well. So we take strategy at the bottom. That's the very first analytical approach. The very first thing we analyze when we're starting our season is what type of team are we? What's our strengths? What's our weaknesses? And what types of systems will best be utilized against, or sorry, well, what types of systems will our team best be able to, to fit into? Okay, so that's when, when we're planning, we talk strategy first, then systems. Then we go into skills. Okay, what types of skills are needed to be able to perform the systems that our team should be able to perform based on our team skill set? And then after that, we tack tactics up on top of the skills. So it's a little bit different when you're thinking in terms of planning the season or planning a practice than it is in terms of, you know, what order do we need to develop things in? So that's the difference between that developmental perspective. That's the order that we need to develop things in. The planning perspective is the order that the coach needs to be thinking in as he or she is getting ready to implement the development of the team. So how does this look like? What, what do we do? Which team systems do we want to focus on, right? That's the, the, that's the initial question. So we're looking at it. You know, I've been coaching the, uh, the young kids for the last couple of years. I'm, I'm coaching my own kids. And that's their age group. 
Um, and here in Salt Lake City, there's not too many different options as far as you know different teams of different types of teams to play. Um, you know, basically at the U8 level, um, it's U8 house and that's it. So what type of team are we? Well, we're a team of eight year olds or younger, and we're a team that has we've got uh, two really top end kids. This is our, my team from last year, right? This is kind of an analysis I would do. We've got two top end kids that are eight years old, two, two last year mites. Um, we've got three or four talented younger kids, and we've got two beginners, right? And that's our team. So I'm looking at that going, what systems would, would be realistic as far as development for that age and skill level of team? Well, for that age and skill level, it would be, you know, the basic three. You know, let's get a, a basic D zone coverage. Let's get a basic breakout, a controlled breakout, and let's teach them how to back check properly. Structured back check. Now, you might be looking at that going, oh, man, you're way too systems driven. And I say, no, 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 no. This isn't about the systems. This is not about, you know, how many complex systems can I teach to a group of eight-year-olds? That's not what it is at all. This is, what are these kids capable of doing and what are the skills needed to be able to do it? This is, this is how we create a framework for the development that will take place over the course of the season. Okay, so for me, I said, we're gonna have a basic D zone coverage. So we're not all chasing the puck. We're not playing piranha hockey, as I call it. You know, where no matter where the puck goes, all, you know, we play the cross ice four on four. So I'd say all eight guys that are on the ice are on top of the puck, right? So we wanna have some structure, we wanna have some, some basic stuff, but it's gonna take some skills to do it. I always ask the question, what takes more skill? Piranha hockey, you know, dump and chase hockey, where dump the puck in and all four guys on the ice chase it? Or controlled hockey? You know, a controlled breakout, for example. To execute a controlled breakout, what does it take? It takes uh, puck control, skating ability, the ability to hit the brakes, right? So quick turn back, power turns. Um, it takes passing. It takes a little bit of timing. There's a lot more that goes into that than just slapping the puck out and chasing it. So there's a lot more skills that go into the controlled style if you're actually teaching it in an effective way. So the next question is which individual skills do you need to be able to perform those three basic goals that we've set for our team of eight-year-olds? Okay, so in this case, we would say forward stride, edge control, crossovers, puck control, passing, stops and starts. Now, is there more to the game than just that? Absolutely, this is a small list, right? But this is kind of what you will, will, will be doing as you're thinking through. Now, will this skill set and this group, this, will this um, mental exercise change if you're working with a team of AAA midget players? Absolutely, absolutely. Your answers will change, but the questions are still the same. What systems do we want to focus on? What skills are we going to need to be able to perform those systems? And the next question is, do our team, is our team capable of performing those? Or, you know, that, that's where the, uh, the analysis comes into play, right? As you're deciding what, what it is that you're going to do next as a coach. That's the biggest question coaches have. It's the, one of the biggest questions I see. This or a variation of this is, how do I know what to do next? This is kind of answering that. So what team skills or tactics do we need? So we talked about individual skills. Now what team skills or tactics do we need? And here's another list of skills. So for, for our basic stuff here, we need to have some, a basic understanding of support, a basic understanding of some timing, angling, that's for the back checking. How do we back check properly? We angle, we take away the, the player's skating lane to the net. And yes, eight-year-olds can be taught this and they can do it. And we'll have some live video examples of this after, after this segment. Um, net front battles, you know, what are we trying to do? We're trying to control the stick in front of the net. So it's great to be in the right position, but you gotta be doing the right thing while in the right position at the right time. Uh, force versus contain. So if the, uh, if, if the other team's best player has the puck in the corner under control, are you gonna go barreling out, skating straight at that player and trying to take the puck off? Or are you gonna contain that, you know, go out, back up a little bit. And so we, you know, we teach these concepts to our youngsters. And of course, as they get older, you're going to be branching out into more complex skills and tactics. Um, gap control, receiving zones, triangulation, cycling, delays, giving goes, all that good stuff that, uh, that goes into a well-rounded hockey player. So this is kind of what it would look like if we kind of charted it out. Okay, so we, we start with our basics, right? We go deep, the, the middle column here is, that's our system. So that's kind of central to the whole planning scheme. That's why I put it in the middle. 
okay? And then we have to the right side, we have our individual skills that are gonna need to be worked on to support our system's objectives. To the left, we have our tactics or our team skills that are gonna be needed to support our, uh, our objectives, our system's objectives. And as the season progresses, obviously these things, these, these all go hand in hand. This isn't an either or, this isn't a, a skills versus systems question. This is, we're gonna use everything. Everything supports each other. But the way that we decide what to work on next is by looking at our systems objectives, our systems goals, okay? And then as this progresses through the season, we're continually reanalyzing and say, okay, you know what? Our D-zone coverage is actually looking pretty good right now. I'm happy with where we're at there. I'm happy with our breakout. You know, let's keep working on our back check, but let's, let's branch into some offensive entry stuff. Let's talk about some regroups. Let's teach the kids a few face-offs. Okay, then you re-ask the same question. Okay, so if we're gonna branch into these other areas of play, what are the things that we're gonna need to be working on? What are the skill sets? Is there anything new that we need to be able to, uh, you know, to execute in order to be able to do these additional skill sets, these additional systems, right? Um, so that's where you're gonna look at, you know, passing, stops and starts, pivots, um, backwards stride, backwards cross under, shooting. There's, I mean, we could go on and on of the, you know, a possible list of, of skills that would be required to support whatever given systems we're talking about. But uh, this is kind of where we're going with. This is how you think through the game as a coach. And then implement it, turn it into on-ice application. Um, and then in our, in our uh, tactical column, our tactics column, you're gonna teach the kids about receiving zones, passing to an area rather than to a player. Um, and, you know, along with that goes timing again. You know, a lot of these are interchangeable. Uh, you know, triangulation, attack triangle. What does F1 do? What does F2 do? What does F3 do? You need to have structure within the offensive, within the offensive objectives. Um, cycling, delays, give and goes. I mean, this is, this is how you think through the game. So to summarize it, your system's objectives will direct the individual and team skills and tactical development. This process repeats itself over and over and over throughout the course of the season. So an example, again, we're going back to kind of the might example, an example of, of kind of the process that we looked at um, going through, you know, at the beginning of the season and kind of taking a look at what we were, what we were hoping to do um, as we planned the season, what our objectives were and, and how we went about it, executing it. Um, so we, we did an initial assessment and not just of the players, but of the coaching staff as well. So we took a look and said, okay, the coaching staff is good. Um, we're all on the same page. We've got a good team, but we're young, okay? So what are we gonna do with that? Our goal is to execute a structured defensive zone coverage, breakout, and proper back check consistently by the end of the season. Now this was actually, incidentally, this was a team I worked with a couple years ago, okay? And I'll kind of give you the rest of the story of that as we go. Um, but this was a couple years ago. Um, and so one of our goals was, you know, due to the fact that we were young, is let's, let's see if we can be 500 or better by the second half of the season. So we'll take the first half, you know, obviously, you know, learning structured play other than just dump and chase takes a little bit of time to assimilate. And there are some skills that need to be, de be developed in order for us to play a structured style of play. So there was some stuff that we needed, we knew we were going to need to teach and to acquire before, you know, we would be able to see the fruits of the stuff that we had been developing. So that's kind of why we made that, you know, let's look at the second half of the season, see if we can be 500 or better. Our focus skill development with systems application. That's the key. So you're not just teaching a kid how to stick handle, you're teaching a kid why he or she needs to be able to stick handle. You're teaching a kid why he or she needs to be able to give and receive a pass. Okay, it's not just, let's, hey, you know, let's go out and work on passing. It's no, we're gonna go out and work on passing so that you can execute a proper breakout. We're gonna work on power, or sorry, power turns so that if the pressure's on your inside shoulder and you're the man initiating the breakout, that you're gonna be able to hit the brakes and come back out the strong side and then make a breakout pass, right? We're teaching the skills, but always reverting it back and teaching why we're doing the skill that we're working on. So the kids always knew why they were, why they were doing whatever it was that we were practicing at any given time. There's always that application. And that makes it a lot more meaningful for the kids. Results? Uh, we achieved our goals. In fact, we did better. We did much better than 500 um, by the second half of the season. And this is where I said we're going to kind of start talking about the rest of the story is they hit the ground running the next year. 
Um, so the way that the, the seasons worked out, we were actually able to keep a good handful of those same kids together the next season. And all the stuff that we had taught the first season was retained beautifully. So it was a quick review the first week of the season, and all of a sudden, boom, you know, we were executing breakouts by, you know, before our first games hit. Um, structured breakouts, and you know, the, the skills were, were, were beautiful as well. Um, so it's one of those things where you know, if you do it right, not only will you have the best you know, systems executing team, but you'll likely have the best skills team um, you know, that you come up against as well. My team's always one of the strongest skating teams. They've got great hands. They've got good shots. Um, you know, and like I said, I've been working with, it's, it's been a bit of a, an interesting thing because it's been house hockey. Um, so you know, every year we have a few guys that have played before, but then we have a, a handful of, of kids, you know, at least a couple that have never stepped on the ice before. So there's a range of abilities. But by the end of the season, we always have our, even our beginner players contributing by the end of the season because of the focus, you know, again, it's the skill development with systems application. Works beautifully well. Alrighty, well, hopefully you found this video useful. And if you did, I would love to hear your feedback. Let me know what you learned and uh, what aspects of this video you'll be able to take and implement with your team. Um, just a reminder, we've got two more videos coming up in this workshop and they're gonna be awesome. The next video is gonna talk about three simple questions that you can use to teach your players to read and react more effectively. So I'm really excited to bring it to you. Stay tuned, keep an eye on in your inbox, and uh, it'll be coming to you shortly.